want to play this game of football? Then you got to be a man. It has to be head on collisions. You got to hear the bell ring. Or you didn't do your job on that play. Are you ready? Yes! Of course, we all know the outcome of that famous Notre Dame game. Newt Rockney and Lindy Lauro may indeed have very different coaching styles, but what they do have in common is the ability to motivate, the ability to instill pride and sense of purpose in young men, a very special talent indeed. Hello, I'm Peter Visser, and I'm excited to be your host for this, a tribute to a great football coach, and perhaps more important, a compassionate, caring human being. To try to highlight the life and accomplishments of a man who's touched thousands of lives in this short video would be impossible. We'll attempt only to present the essence of a man, a man who many consider to be a legend. Born in Newcastle on June 3, 1921, to Francisco and Beatrice Loro, a proud Italian immigrant family, Lindoro Lauro was destined to be a leader. At an early age, Lindy impressed his parents as possessing a remarkable talent on the violin. His music career was short-lived, however. In 1932, while on an extended stay in Italy, Lindy was conscripted into Mussolini's mandatory youth brigade. A year later, Lindy found himself back in Newcastle with an increasing interest in the pigskin. He first gained widespread recognition in 1937 when, as a sophomore at Newcastle High, his game-winning pass to Eddie Sovesky provided the only touchdown in the celebrated 7-0 victory over Massillon, Ohio. Lindy attended Roosevelt Military Academy in 1940, the University of Alabama in 1941, and during World War II, he enlisted in the U.S. Air Force, assigned to Special Forces, where he played in the same backfield as Charlie Trippi for three years. Lindy later attended the University of Pittsburgh and was a four-year, two-way starter as a fullback in safety while earning double master's degrees in education and counseling. It was my pleasure to first meet Lindy Lauro in September of 1948 when I entered Pitt as a freshman and became a manager on the football team. And Lindy, of course, was an outstanding running back for us in 1948. Lindy was a junior, I was a freshman, but it seemed that immediately we hit it off, and uh, Lindy uh, always uh, seemed to look after me. I looked up to Lindy in 1948, and here in 1993, I still look up to Lindy Lauro. He graduated in 1950 and joined the Chicago Cardinals, making him the oldest rookie to ever perform in the NFL. In 1951, he was named most valuable player in the EFL Eastern College All-Star Game. The following year, Lindy headed for Dickinson College to become the offensive coordinator, assistant basketball coach, and head baseball coach. He later assisted Buddy Kerr at the University of Dayton for two seasons before moving to Sarnia of the CFL for one year. We're going to take a break right now, but when we return, we'll take a look at Coach Lauro's early years as leader of the Red Hurricanes. Stay with us. It's the two albums set you've been waiting for. Recorded live at the Newcastle Playhouse, the incomparable Lindy Lauro singing all of your favorites. Lindy sings all of your beloved classics like 28 Power, Left Formation 28 Power, and who will ever forget the classic fans in the stand singing Here It Comes Again at 28 Power. Order today. Lindy Lauro live at the Newcastle Playhouse. Send 1995 to Butler, Beaver Falls, Aliquippa, or any other team that ever played Newcastle. So you don't forget, order before midnight tonight. Welcome back. When Lindy Lauro became head coach at Newcastle High in 1961, he was a man on a mission. 
Newcastle had not won a WPIAL championship for many years. The glorious tradition seemed to be fading into obscurity. Coach Lauro took over the struggling Canes and guided the team from a 2-8 record the previous year to a 7-3 finish his first season. A year later, he led Newcastle to an undefeated season, 9-0-1. I'd say the biggest contribution Lindy made to Newcastle would be the tradition that he kept up when Mr. Bridenbaugh left. Bride, Mr. Bridenbaugh had quite a tradition when he left, and Lindy kept it up. I mean, he he was proud of that. You know, he he coached tough football. His, his kids were, were very good athletes, and he kept the tradition in Newcastle alive. They were small, they were talented, one of the finest collections of athletes ever assembled on one Red Hurricanes team. But most of all, they were fun to watch. The 1967 Canes captured the WPIAL championship for the first time in 18 years. The glorious tradition was back to stay. And I still think that all his teams, and he's had some great ones, I think the 67 one is his favorite one, maybe not necessarily the best one, but his favorite one because they were the one who brought the championship back and they were a bunch of overachievers, if you will. Of course, I feel, you know, that we were the, the greatest team assembled. Uh, I don't know what the coach, he's, he's never really come out and say, said anything, not to me anyway, but he was a great, great motivator at halftime, before the game, very, very great. I mean, when he, when he was done talking to you, you know, he, he, he had you ready to just go out and, and, and knock walls over. Many feel the 1970 Canes were the best ever produced by Lauro and Newcastle High. No matter how successful a Cane team was, Lindy's locker room manner kept the egos in check. Come halftime, I figured, well, you know, everything, I'm the captain, I'll sit right here in front of them, you know. Well, the very first person he came to was me, and he, he had his clipboard with him, and he, he just put it across my head and, and told me that... <laughs> that I wasn't, you know, wasn't as great as I thought or whatever. And that kind of, you know, and for that, then on the rest of the year, I was in the back row hiding from them, you know, at halftime. Coach Laura would lead the Red Hurricanes to two more WPIAL victories, which came in 1973 and 75. The years rolled on. Lindy and the Red Hurricanes continued to collect victory after victory. Life off the field was good also. Lindy married Victoria Clavelli and was the proud father of two daughters, Lindy and Marguerite. In 1991, the Canes achieved a milestone reserved only for a select few. In fact, only five other high schools in the country have ever reached it. In a 44-22 win over Indiana, the Red Hurricanes notched Newcastle's 600th victory. Lindy Laurel was more than a great coach. Players and opposing coaches alike will tell you he was teacher first. A teacher in every sense of the word. Uh, after getting beat the first four or five years by Lindy, um, it, it became very discouraging. So one game, I remember in particular, uh, coming to Newcastle, I figured I'm going to change my philosophy and I'm going to try to use a different image. Uh, I used to always go on the field and shake Lindy's hand and I was very humble and, uh, and self, you know, su subdued. And, and, but one game I came on the field and I walked up to Lindy and he was standing in the middle of the field and we always sh shook hands and we talked. And I walked up to Lindy and I shook his hand and I said, Lindy, tonight I'm kicking your ass. And I turned around and walked away. And uh, I figured, boy, that's going to that's gonna sit in real good with him. Uh, of course, we lost the game, and after the game, Lindy said to me, you're learning. We're undefeated after five games. The Red Hurricanes are undefeated. And two hours before the game, you know, my kids are in there getting taped, and as per usual, you would go outside and look at the field, and, you know, nobody's in the stands yet, but the concession stands would be open. And uh, as per tradition, Lindy would get there early, and he'd go over and uh, have something to eat at the concession stand and drink something. 
And as I came out, he was standing there, and I went over, I said, hi, coach, how, how you doing? And uh, he wasn't eating anything, but I knew he had had a hot dog because there was mustard all over his coaching shirt. And uh, that wasn't unusual either. But uh, he said to me, he said, Dan, you had a big win over Butler. He says, but you're going to have to learn a little bit of humility. And I said, what do you mean, coach? He said, well, you said a lot of things in the newspaper. You were like, really like, uh, you weren't very courteous to Art and to Butler. I said, well, you know, I'm a young coach and I was excited. I probably should have been, showed a little more class. He said, well, Dan, what you need to understand is that Art and I are going to beat you more times than you're going to beat us. Head up in here and you got to hit. Got to pick the thing up. Come on. Coach Laurel inspired young men to be the best. One has to wonder, what inspired Lindy Lauro? First of all, Lindy has a love for Newcastle High School that no one will ever, ever, ever understand. Uh, there's a depth to that that um, is beyond, beyond my comprehension. And I, and I think that had a lot to do with it. Uh, secondly, I think he had a dedication to young men. Uh, to, the, to the sport of football, but, but to the young men who participated in it that, um, uh, again, was way above the norm. The accomplishments of Coach Lauro on the gridiron are too numerous to mention. His victories off the field cannot be ignored. I taught and coached up in Clarion, Pennsylvania for four years, and everybody there in that town knew about Newcastle, you know. I was even going to change the school colors to red and black. You know, and uh, everybody knew about Newcastle. And I think he instills that pride, that, that believing in yourself to succeed. He instills that in you. Through the years of Lindy's tenure, one of the most anticipated rivalries was always Butler. Even though Lindy and Art were friends off the field, when Friday night rolled around, they were at each other's throats. It so happened that the series that we coached against each other ended up with 12 wins for Newcastle, 12 wins for Butler, and we had one tie in my 25 years as head coach. So that, that, that's, uh, I think, beautiful because this way he could never brag and I could never brag. Uh, and, and, uh, uh, but I think that everyone who's ever seen these two teams play during this era of time probably saw high school uh, football in western Pennsylvania at its best. Friends, former ball players. This is the damnest hardest thing I've ever had to do. <coughs> but things have to come to an end or an era has to uh, uh, pass. And at this time, I'm announcing today my retirement from football and, and as the head coach of Newcastle High School. Over his 30-some-odd years as head coach, Lindy Lauro has touched thousands of lives. He's left behind a tradition which will never be forgotten. Just as each one of Coach Lauro's boys over the years has heard, do it again, do it again, we all have to wonder, no matter how good his successor may be, could anyone ever really do it again? We played you the year after you won the WPIL championship, and we played at Newcastle, and that night uh, the people claimed that there were about 13,000 people in attendance, and we were lucky enough to beat you that night. And after the game, we went out to the middle of the field, and we said our post-game prayer, and instead of you going into the locker room and getting away from all this noise that was going on. And people were, of course, not happy that Newcastle got beat. But you waited until we were done to shake my hand. I'll never forget that, Lindy. That proves to me what kind of a person you, you really are. Since 1985, when I moved to California, I have frequently pondered exactly how one becomes as great a football coach as you have been over the years. I've read between the lines, or maybe I've just stumbled upon the obvious of what you were teaching all those years, that special people do special things, and that we were special because we were from Newcastle. Well, Coach, I just want you to know that we all feel that you're a special guy. We want you to take care, and God bless. We love you, Coach.
and coaching for Lindy was a great learning experience and I feel it has been a very big part of my success understanding uh, the knowledge that I gained from Lindy, the attitude of, of working, uh, not being afraid to put in time, not being afraid to, to go that little bit extra to help your ball players. I think you could sum Lindy up by an old Frank Sinatra record. The name of it is I Did It My Way and Lindy certainly did things his way. Uh, they, the X and O's is, I think are irrelevant. I think what's relevant is that uh, you, you see a man like Lindy who has given uh, his whole life to the youth of Newcastle. The Glorious Tradition is a feeling. The Glorious Tradition is, is, is something experienced by those who have participated in it. Okay, so Lindy will always be there for the next generation, whether it's not physically. And uh, he has things to say that people need to listen to. And the, and the fortunate thing is that a lot of people that passed through the halls of Newcastle High and through the gridiron of uh, Taggart Stadium and through the streets of the community had the opportunity to be exposed to Lindy and his philosophy and his attitude about life and what it takes to be successful and a good human being. And that's, that's his legacy, and that's what Lindy and every good teacher and every good coach stands for.